funky comedy. No. How's your sound going? How's my sound? I don't know. You, you know, good. you're the sound guy. It's pretty good. You're the sound person. Uh, we're notifying yeah. people that we're getting sound mine My name's Christian Langeter and I'm an equine soft tissue therapist. I specialise in treating muscular issues in performance horses. Hi guys, uh, we, we're kind of going to just jump into this. Uh, this is episode number... I don't know. Oh! 37? So... 38? Oh my God! You know it's shocking. This is ah, oh, we can we can take on what's her name sing. This is episode thirty something or other. Yep, thirty something or other. Thirty something or other. Welcome to us. Congratulations to us for doing that. Um, sorry, I'm putting my tea out of the way. I don't know where it's going to go. Anyway, um, so this week has been kind of interesting. I want to first um congratulate uh, Jane Chapel Hyam in the UK um for uh, coming third in the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Stakes in um Royal Ascot. Uh, what a what an incredible run! It was very tight. She could have easily had that extra bit. Um, um, anyway, uh, so uh, congratulations to Jane. Um, I also am um, wearing uh, the Singapore um, Polo Carnival Singapore Polo Carnival cap um, because I was on uh, the NRG podcast with uh, with the um, with the guys. Um, if you have not seen the NRG podcast uh, Polo podcast. It's um, a group of professional polo tri- players that um, that interview all sorts of people, like me. So I don't know. Sorry. Um, so um, they interview people like me. They're a great bunch of guys. They're quick-witted. They're fast. They're funny. Um, please check out their podcast. Um, I was not as fast or funny, however, because I was having technical difficulties, which is unlike me. Um, but uh, I didn't have Drew to make sure that my computer and things were working. But... Um, we still got through it. We had a great chat. We had a great time. And anyway, so so we had that. Um, it has been a wintry week. We've had the shortest day of the year. So um, summer is definitely coming. Summer's on, on the way, we think. But if you look outside, it's pretty horrible. Um, Pucci's gone off to help her son Jackson at Werribee riding. Um, well, she'll do the planning up. Today's Caulfield. It's going to be a horrible day at Caulfield. We've got... Uh, Alex Ray's in, um, Pat and Harris, Pat, uh, Pat, um, Kerry and Harris. I sound like Joe Biden there. Um, Shane Nichols has got a couple. And tomorrow we've got a few. I think it's at Ballarat tomorrow. So anyway, um, we've got Little Jack Diamond Decorator, You Genius, and our Crackland Rose. The last two are from Shane Nichols. Um, Little Jack has been doing really well for Alex Ray, so good luck to them. Um, I, I mentioned those just because they're trainers that I worked with this week. They are not tips, <laughs> but anyway, so there we go. Um, how's your week, Drew? Oh, super, thanks. Well, thank you a, very much. I've got a question over yeah. here. When looking over, this is from Save MLK Boulevard, who has oh, yeah, this hello. Before. Yeah. When looking over a horse to buy, what reaction points would you absolutely test? Oh, right. Um, I would absolutely test. I'd be looking around the sacrum. The, the only one that I really don't like is uh, Sacred Iliac. I'd be checking their knees. So I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the sacrum right at the top, right up in the top part of the horse, I would make sure that that's not a problem. I would look for tears. Um, I would definitely get a vet check. I, you know, even if I was checking a horse, I would have a vet check it. So I don't know if you do vet checks where in, uh, it's, um, uh, oh God. anyway, I know who it is. I've forgotten her name. Um, right. Sheila, is it? Isn't it Sheila? Save MLK Boulevard. Maybe. I think it's Sheila. Sheila, if it's you, um, I would always have a vet check because the vets are going to check structural stuff, and I think that you really need to do that. So um, here we do that as a natural thing. Um, I don't know if they do it in the states. Um, oh yeah, there you go. So yeah, oh yes, there it's she's me, here. Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Yeah, hi. How are you? Um, I would definitely do vet checks, um, but I would also, me personally. I would want to know that the knees are moving properly and that the sacroiliac is fine. I don't mind fractured um, pelvises or fractured withers. Um, they're absolutely fine. They can function perfectly fine with those. I don't like <coughs> sacroiliac problems. Um, so the sacroiliac joint and the knees, they're the main thing that I'd be worried about. Or, or um, spinal changes. But your vet should be able to tell you if you've got that in the vet check. 
And Sheila, uh, if it is the same Sheila, I'm assuming yeah, it is. Yeah, it has is. Has sent definitely. through um, a video for you to have a look at later on. So oh, do you? Hang around, and we'll um, we'll get to your video. Mm. Anything else before we proceed? No, my friend. Let's do it. Let's get it. Uh, we're at 1.6 thousand likes. Please keep hitting it. This is really cool. Thank you. Thanks everyone for going so hard on it. Um, but please keep hitting it. Like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, Donna will come back to you. Um, and but while you're waiting, please just smash the like button. Yeah. Quick video, and we'll be back. Yep. Yeah. What's his name again? Lewis. Lewis. So we're with Lewis and Emily's been saying that he's big rooting and usually, for some reason I'm getting more of these. What a big bug. But anyway, <laughs> for some reason, usually it's medial glute, biceps femoris, which is not, or semi-membranosis, which it really isn't really, but we got this. He's sore through here, that's semi-tendinosis. So, with semi-tendinosis being short sore, and he's being nice to me because he could have kicked me then, um, this should be sore too. Yeah, so we saw up here, it goes all the way through here. It's not this inside one, it goes all the way through here. Because he's well fed, it's hard to tell. But anyway, I'm gonna be clever and I'm gonna try to treat it from down here. So give me a second. Poor boy, I'm just poking him. <laughs> Emily's just laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad, I was like, oh. Her little, her little you weren't just tiny. being mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So that's gone. Again, there's a little bit there still, a touch, no, actually it's gone. He's just complaining because he thought. Alright, so there you go. I don't know why I've been getting semi tendinosis recently because I never get it, so I don't know what it is about now and having it all the time, but there you go, that's, that was that, thanks. Lewis, um, the, the hamstring muscle or the, the back of the horse is divided into three main hamstring muscles. So if you want to go to my website and learn about how to differentiate from these three different muscles, go to langatairquine.com, um, sign up to the diagnostic um, part of my website. But it's divided into three separate sections and they're three different, well, there are two different types of sports or two different types of behaviors that make those sore. The outer ones, the outer hamstring, which is on the outside here, is biceps femoris. That's usually racing, dressage, anything that you're actually really sitting with. Um, things like cutting, reining, all that sort of stuff. Then you've got jumpers or, or um, jumping out of the gates in racing or jumpers, etc. They'll do semi membranosis, which is kind of like the inside of the hamstring here. So um, depending on how uh, which sport it is, if you're uh, doing racing and you're sore on the inside leg, inside hamstring, it means either it did it uh, in the paddock, jumping out of a gate, or you've got a track rider that's working your horse wrong. So, um, and I very rarely see semi-tendinosis, which is that one. I hardly ever see it. I was having a run of seeing those, so I thought I'd put it up. It's one of the ones that I don't often get to show you. Biceps femoris on the outside. I, I've been looking through a few of my videos. That one comes up so commonly, um, but it means that the horses are using their uh, rear end properly. So if you wanna go and check your horse, if your dressage, it should be maybe a little bit like, you know, there's a difference between dysfunctional and actually being worked and strengthening up. And so they'll always be a little bit sore if they're strengthening up. Um, that one was semi-tendinosis. That was Lewis, the little horse at Durabon. Um, I go there a fair bit. I think I'm going there in the next couple of weeks. Um, so it's a good adjustment. But, well, it's a, now I sound like Donald Trump. It's a good adjustment place. It's the best. No one ever thought it's of it best. ever. The it's the best. It's the best adjustment place and the best horses. They're so beautiful. No one's ever seen them so beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. For all the Americans who like Donald Trump, I apologise. Anyway, yeah, um, we, let me have a look. We, just, we caught the debate yesterday over here in Australia, and I just want to wish uh, everyone living in America all the best. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you um, can, we, can we scroll down a bit on this one? Um, drip, yeah, down down that's, one more. That's it. No, there's one more. Oh, no, sorry, up. up to, oh. uh, no, yep. I uh, saw something last night about kissing spine. 
I'm going to say a thing about kiss, kissing spine. Here in Australia at the moment, we have a couple of veterinary clinics that are over-diagnosing and I think over-treating kissing spine. It's not just me that's thinking it, it's also a lot of the vets here are thinking that it's getting over-serviced. If you have kissing spine and you're in Australia, make sure that you get a second opinion from another vet. I think that um, unfortunately at the moment, there's, um, we, you know, we're... Um, some vets, are like the, a whole bunch of different things, some vets are actually operating on it. Some vets are saying that they think that the rehab is the part that's actually helping the, the horse, not the operation. So make sure it's not being over-serviced. If you do have a horse um, and you um, think it may have kissing spine, then make sure you get two completely separate vets to have a check. Um, so just so you know. Um, anyway. Just didn't need one. We're over to Ben O'Farrell's for some fascial bluing. Oh, really? There we go. All right, we're at uh, Ben O'Farrell's racing, um, just a, a, a trainer here in Geelong. This is Jekyll and Hyde, one of his horses. I just want to show you something. If you're worried about free moving necks in your horse, and I mean, not this way, I mean free moving as in running. There's a really cool video called Within Nature's Giants that shows when they get a cadaver of a horse and they move its head, the lungs actually mechanically move with the neck. So it goes to show that free moving neck means better breathing or means that the horse can breathe properly. So you could have an argument that as they like, you know, instead of breathing, they just open their airways and use their neck like bellows. But if you're worried about checking, what you can do is, this is something that I always finish off on. I'm not sure if he's gonna let me now, but this whole shoulder is gonna open up, right? So all you need to do is go to the mid part of the neck Find a little lip, he's gonna be here. Funny, ah, here we go. And so all you do is just rock this open. I'm gonna use my leg just to hold against the horse. And you can see all I'm doing is stopping, there's fascia, fascia is this slippery stuff. I'm stopping the shoulder from sticking to the neck here. So all I'm making sure that that's open. You might hear a suction cup, like it's sort of like the fascia opening up or like the, an adhesion opening up. That's pro not a problem. So all you do is just stick your fingers in, open it up and roll it through. Only do it about once a month. Don't go crazy on it. Don't annoy them. That's how you check it out. Thanks, Wait. So um, fascia is the slippery stuff on the horse. Hughes Jackman, I've been transported to 36. What happened? I don't know. I, I accidentally invited someone to join the live. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, anyway, so that was the, the shoulder. So what happens is, um, one of the last things I do on every horse when I finish it up is I open up the shoulder and make sure that the shoulder is not sticking to the neck. There is a big fascial sheath between the shoulder and the neck. What fascia is, is that slippery stuff. If you get a dehydrate, I'm sorry, if you get inflammation in the shoulder or the neck, it will dehydrate the connective tissue, which is the slippery stuff, thanks Drew, um, which is the slippery stuff between the shoulder and the neck. And what happens is as that slippery stuff starts drying out, it then sticks it's called a hydrostatic bond. It can become covalent, which means it can become a, a physical bond by shooting fibers across if it's left too long. So what I like to do is I like to go to the middle of the horse's neck, peel that shoulder open, rock it open. Sometimes you'll hear a suction cup sound because the connective tissue is stuck to the, to the neck. And I open it up and I just roll it through. It's not something that you would do every week. You'd maybe do it once or twice a month just to make sure. Don't do it every day because it's going to annoy the horse. So you open up that shoulder, make sure it's moving freely because as I said, there is amazing video from a, a group, a, a documentary called Within, Na Within Nature's Giants. Um, and they move the neck of a dead horse, of a cadaver horse. And as they move the neck, the lungs actually mechanically move. So that means, or you could theorize, but that means that what the horses do is just open their airways and as they run, they move their neck and the lungs work like bellows. So they probably draw more than they breathe. So if that is the case, or even it's partially the case, it means that you need a free moving neck. And that would mean that if you have a neck restriction, you have a breathing restriction, which means poorer performance. It means the horse can't get that oxygen that it needs to run. So, um, uh, that was Ben O'Farrell in, in, um, out at Swan Bay now, near Geelong Way. I've got AJRRJA saying, hi from the UK, watching your videos is like watching a magic trick. Oh, it is. Thank you very much. I love that it looks like a magic trick. I was talking to a few people and over the last five years, I've been trying to make it look more and more like an illusion um, for two reasons. Oh, well, for a few reasons. 
I think it looks cool. It amuses me, and it really piss off pisses people off who want to give me, uh, you know, a bit of grief about it, um, which I'm fine about. So um, I have made it look like it looks like I'm doing nothing, but there's a lot going on. I am writing a course to teach this magic. I'm currently writing a course. There is already the diagnostic course on my uh, website, so please go and check that out. There's free parts of it that you can have a look at. Um, but I'm also going to be writing a course on how I treat so everyone can do the magic. I guarantee you I've taught many people how to do it and it's tricky, but it's really cool and it'll surprise the shit out of you when you get to do it yourself. Martin Lanny would like to know what's the difference between your technique and Emmett's? Ah, oh, it's completely different. Well, you know what? The um, I, I don't know that Emmett know what they're necessarily doing or how they're doing it. They say that it's an adaptation of osteopathy. Mine is an adaptation of osteopathy. I definitely have a little bit of Emmett-y stuff. Well, it's actually equus muscle management from the precursors of Emmett. Um, and then there's, uh, so Emmett um, predominantly do um, uh, touch insertion and um, origin and insertion to treat muscles. Um, you know, he's been around for a while. It is similar. I think mine has got a bit more Bowen therapy on it, a lot more osteopathy, and just is uh, just works on a different premise. So um, similar. They use a lot of my videos. I love Emmett. I, I think it's an incredible therapy, but I'm just a little bit different, and I don't have as much superstition involved in mine. I guess I don't know, but uh, but incredible. I love I love Emmett. I think it's an amazing person. So if you if you're looking somewhere and you're looking for a, ther a therapist, definitely either get a bone therapist or an Emmett therapist if you can get one. Um, Donna, speaking of Emmett and bone therapists, Donna has, I would like to know about the reactions I told you about during the um, hip glute move. Ah, oh, well, I can't go into that right now here, Donna. Um, we'd have to, you'd have to give me a buzz because um, this is kind of a, too quick for it. Too quick for it? All right. Too quick for it. Bit grumpy. <laughs> Are you right? <laughs> I got that. Um, this is James. James, he's a standard bread, but he does adult rider dressage, right? Um, and he can be a little bit mouthy, as you can see. So, um, what he's got, the thing that I want to film here is this neck right here that's sore. Um, is this muscle in here, sternocephalicus? James, anyway. <laughs> And then we've also got peck, which is right here. Anyway, so I'm just going to treat these and see first. So that's the soreness in the peck, right? Um, so I'm back from Singapore. Anyway, Singapore was awesome. Um, this is really cold. It's actually not too bad right now, but we've still got three degree days here. Um, so I'm just going to be with James for a second. So occasionally when I'm filming and I talk, um, I'm concentrating on what's going on with the horse as well. So. All of a sudden I can feel him zone out and I can feel what's going on here, so I'll pause. But so we're just doing the peck right now. So excuse me if I pause and, and do stuff. Anyway, Singapore was awesome. It was hot, it was sweaty, which I love. The food was awesome, the people were incredible. And so now we're back to chilly Melbourne. So that's the chest. But he still wants to bite me. <laughs> he still wants to bite me for the neck. Anyway, he's had a bunch of stuff going on. Um, and so we've just been systematically fixing it up. And he was being James, so I thought we'd, uh, uh, we'd film him. And I haven't filmed anything. So what I'm going to do is I'll still start filming from the things from Melbourne. And I'll try to filter in things from Singapore so you can see the stuff that's been going on. So that's the neck, that's the chest. Good boy. Anyway, so that's James the standy. Um, anyway, he's cute really, he's just a bit mouthy. Yeah, anyway, thank you. Thanks. Stop. Hello. So James is a very well-known standard bred out here. He does dressage. He's um he's got a bit of quite a bit of a following. He's a bit bitey. Um, but you know what, that's that's the way he is. I love a horse with a bit of attitude. You always, you are also I'm concentrating because James is going to try to bite me. Um, I don't know why in dressage he had the sore peck. <clears throat> That's got to have been a, a paddock issue or a paddock injury. 
Um, so the, the descending peck that I fixed on him was definitely not dressage. The inner neck part is, definitely, is a very common collection part. My two most common soreness that I see anywhere are, are any plans to visit the US? Yes, sorry, I'm being dis distracted. I'd love to. Um, <clears throat> so um, the two major parts that are always are, are very common is lower neck, which is actually the uh, brachiocephalicus as it attaches into the sternum, and also bicep femoris, which is the outside back hamstring. That's the most common, they're the two most common soreness I see everywhere. Um, very common in dressage just because of the collection. The pec muscle that he had, um, which picks up pretty easily, um, the pec muscle that he had uh, was um, was not, that would have been from, from Paddock. Sorry, I'm looking at the video that Drew's kind of put up behind me, so I'm getting distracted. Uh, any plans to come to the US? I would love to get to the US. I, it is definitely a place that I'm going to come. Um, <clears throat> whereabouts in Oz are you based? Um, Jackal, we're in Melbourne, or I'm on the Mornington Peninsula, but um, Melbourne, Victoria. So down, down the deep south. Um, it's chilly here at the moment, um, but gets nice and hot during the summer. And it still looks like night time outside, and it's about, God, 8.30. Yep, it is. All right, there we so go. Sheila has hit us, so I'll just do my little bit now. Yep. Sheila, anyone who wants to email us videos, questions, anything... Email address is the Langaderequine Show at gmail.com and also jump over onto our YouTube, like, subscribe, and uh, tell us, talk to us there. Sheila has sent through um, two videos. This is the of longer course. one. Yeah. She says, Hi, I'm not sure I'm on the scapula here. I'm trying to check for saddle soreness. I only got a reaction on one side, but no buckling, only licking and chewing and yawning and some head shakes. Yep. This is a Cherokee American quarter horse mare with locking stifles. We are in Michigan, USA. Thanks. Is that Sheila Sheila or that's we Sheila just... Sheila Sheila. Oh, yeah, cool. I think, so. I think that's Sheila. It's, uh, so there we go. Oh. No, it doesn't. I'm just going to watch this, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, I already know. Um, no, it doesn't, Sheila. What you're doing is you're pushing into the thoracic trapezius. That is a collection muscle. That means that someone, like she basically got a little bit of a strain from collection. So that's over the, the shoulder. Where's that blue horse? Oh, here we go. Uh, we, sh we should name the blue horse. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, dealing with idiots and children. Drew's the child. Um, anyway, so um, you're... <laughs> here we go. You're in... This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, what happens is if you've got the scapula here, as the scapula is like that, Sheila, and the scapula comes back behind, if this is the back, the scapula comes back behind where the, where the saddle sits, you want to actually just put your fingers directly on top of the scapula and push down, right? And be, you can be fairly brutal because you're seeing if it's bruised. If you just do this, like surface stuff, um, it, it's going to, you're not going to get a really good reading. Make sure your fingers are nice and solid on the scapula and then push down. And if there is any bruising or anything like that, it will show, all right? It will it will come up. So do that. Um, don't push into the into the trapezius. All you're doing, if you're pushing in soft tissue, um, that's just going to be collection. Push on the scapula because as it rolls back, that will get bruised on the saddle, and then you'll be able to see if there's any tight any um, tightness in the in the saddle up at the withers. Was cool. that one? And we got another. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh... This is just a quick 12 second thing of ah. what it looks like walking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this one, she says, this is a video of the same horse, I assume. Yeah. She's a beautiful mover, packs the kids around beginner courses. She only jumps cross rails due to her stifles. I hope you can hear them in this video. Yeah. Do you think it hurts her? Oh, so often when I hear the clicking, I think it's ligament. And so, I don't know why I'm playing with that. Um, I, I think it's ligament. Um, so again, 
Um, I'm not sure if it hurts, it would definitely cause a, a hindrance in movement. Um, but I need to show, and I, I was going to show, I haven't found a really good horse to show locking stifle and how to check locking stifle. The best thing for locking stifle is movement. Um, the best thing for any type of joints is obviously supplements or uh, pentazan, stuff like that. But all that stuff I would refer on to a vet rather than me. Um, things like poles to make sure that they're using, they're getting a proper range of motion, etc. Um, but anyway, there you go. Um, that, that, I'm, I'm, um, to be honest, I'm shocking from anything from the knee down. Once we get to structural stuff, I just refer on to vets. As I say, I'm very good at sticking in my lane. Thanks whoever keeps hitting the like button. Um, uh, I'm very good at sticking in my lane. So I always, if I see something uh, structural going on in a horse, I refer straight to vets. If I see anything that's mildly saddle um, issue, then I go straight to the saddle fitter. I don't try to then um, fix the saddle myself or check the saddle myself. Um, Serenity Equine Ranch, hello. Uh, my horse is bruised from the saddle. How long should I wait to ride her? A month? No, God no. Once you've actually, see this is a, the thing is, if you've got horses that are bruised um, by the saddle, if you have a horse that's bruised by the saddle pattern, once you change the pattern of the saddle or you've changed the saddle, you're good to go, right? Because it is just a bruise. Um, it's much like if you're wearing out a new pair of shoes, like a, some, like, you know, I mean, this is the way I usually explain it. If you've got a new pair of shoes on and they put pressure at the back of your heel in a particular way, <clears throat> all you have to do is put on a different pair of shoes and the difference of pattern and pressure makes it easier for you to walk. Now, there's going to be a little bit of stuff, but so long as it's not a different saddle and it's not pushing on exactly the same spot, you're absolutely good to go. And then it usually only takes a couple of weeks for the bruising to go away anyway. But I don't, I, I just get people... Um, Thanks. Should I work on that trapezius? Absolutely, you should work on it. But again, Sheila, it's not that bad. That's actually not a bad um, trapezius reaction. That's pretty mild. Um, but I would definitely work it and definitely don't overwork it. Um, uh, thanks, uh, 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 company, the company is fixing the saddle now. Yeah, so uh, Serenity Equine Ranch. Um, the, all, all you need to do is just put even put on... So if I have people competing... And they've got to compete tomorrow, but they've got a saddle that's hurting the horse. I just get them to put a different saddle on um, or ride, work the horse in a different saddle and then compete on the saddle that they like to compete in until they can get the saddle fixed. It's not that much of a big deal. Um, bruising is bruising. You're not going to injure the horse. Obviously, if you do it to a young horse or you do it for a very long time, you'll start getting um, a compromisable horse, but no big, no big problem. Anyway... That's it there we go. Us. That's it. Are we a bit over time? Yep. Ah, bugger. Right, guys. Well, that was um, episode 30-something or other. Um, thank you very much. That was really cool. Thanks, Sheila, for the little... I love when people send in stuff as well. So if you want to send in any videos and have me look at them, send them to... The Langata Equine Show at gmail.com. So um, next week is uh, 30 something or other plus one. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing. Um, good luck to everyone who's racing, competing um, at Werribee, uh, riding, and just like everyone who's with their horses, be safe. If you're poking sore bits, be safe. Thank you very much. Thanks for this.